Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to continue talking about the center of excellence, but we're going to focus on environment management. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with what is an environment in Power Platform? Well, it's a container that allows administrators to manage apps, flows, connections, and other resources within Power Platform, along with permissions to allow organization members to use these resources. The other piece of this is developing an environment strategy, which means configuring environments and other layers of data security in a way that supports productive development, but also securing and organizing resources. So now that we understand what environments are, we need to have an environment strategy within our tenants. What does that mean? It means configuring your environments in a way that promotes productive development within your organization while securing and organizing those resources. I'm going to throw a link in the description below of this document that Microsoft has put together about establishing an environment strategy. It makes great points and maps out exactly what you need to think about when creating an environment strategy. Now, I'm not going to walk you through exactly what your environment strategy should look like. But I do want to point out a few great tools that the COE toolkit provides to manage your environments. These tools are great and will help you with your environment strategy and your environment management. So let's jump into these tools. Okay, so now we're inside of our COE environment. You'll see that we have two apps here, the admin environment request and the maker environment request. Now I'm an admin, so I can see both of these, but if you're a maker, you're probably just gonna see the maker environment request app. So let's check out what this looks like. I'm gonna open the maker environment request and right away, it's gonna show me a list of my pending environment requests. Now I've created one here that we can take a look at. Now right away, we'll see that I have a pending environment request. You can track the status of this environment here. We can also create a new environment request and let's see what this looks like. First off, we need to pick which connectors that we're gonna be using within this environment. So let's pick Salesforce and Dataverse. And we'll select next. Next, you'll pick the administrators that you want included in this environment. By default, you are selected as an administrator if you're creating this request. So if I look up my name, you'll see I'm already selected. I'm just going to leave that as the default and move on to the next step. So now we have to pick the name of the environment, the region where the users will be using this environment, and then the type, production or sandbox. The purpose of this environment so that the administrator can approve this environment request. The business area, and then you can even put a timeline on this environment. Is it only going to be used for a certain amount of time and we can delete it after to keep things clean? Or is it indefinite? We're going to say indefinite. And then do we need a Dataverse database for this environment? So there's a lot of great details that are captured when a maker is requesting a new environment. Now that we've seen what this looks like for a maker, let's check out what this looks like for an admin. Now that we've seen what this looks like for a maker when they're requesting an environment, let's check out what this looks like for an admin when they're approving environments. Okay, so instead of selecting the maker env environment request app, let's select the admin environment request app. So we can see my one environment request that I had. And let's select this and view it. And we can get a lot of great details here. So first off, we see that this is pending and who it's requested by. Um, if you remember, we uh, can select if we want a Dataverse database with it. The region, if it has an expiration, the type of environment, we can see the business justification for it. We can see the admins that were added to it. We can even add notes to this request. 
we can see data policies that uh, will apply to this environment. And we can see connectors that were requested for this environment. So a lot of great details to make a decision on if you want to approve and move forward with this environment, or if you need more details, you can even email the administrators. Or if you don't think this fits with your environment strategy, you can just go ahead and reject this. That will sign the rejection to your administrator who requested this. Okay, so now that we have the admin app pulled up, we can see a list of our pending environment requests on this screen. I'm gonna select the one environment request that we have, and I'm gonna view it so that we can see some of the details here. You can see a lot of the things that we needed to fill out in the environment request form show up here, but also a few additional details. You can see data policies that will apply to this environment uh, if it's created. You can view and modify those policies so that if you want to add this environment to uh, an existing DLP policy, you can do that from here. You can add notes about this environment request and the decision that was made on it. You can add notes regarding the decision about this request. You can add notes to help clarify the request decision. And you can see the connectors that are going to be involved with this environment request. And if you need more details, you can always email the admins to gather a little more detail about why they need this environment and if it fits into the environment strategy. And then you can always approve or reject this environment request as an administrator. So just to recap, there are a couple of great tools in the COE toolkit to help manage your environments for your organization. Your makers can request environments and give some justification as to why they need that environment and what details are gonna be included in that environment, like connectors, administrators. And your admins can then view those requests. They can ask for more information about that environment from the administrators. They can also see what DLP policies will apply to that environment and include DLP policies on that environment and they can approve and reject environment requests. So some really great tools here to help manage your Power Platform tenant and make sure that you are in control of what environments are getting created, but also enabling your makers in your Power Platform tenant to make sure they are getting what they need and to make sure that you're not creating too much sprawl in your Power Platform tenant. Thanks so much for joining everyone. I'll catch you in my next video.